Well, good morning, viewers. Today we have a 2010 Jeep Grand Cherokee, and it's here because the MIL has been coming on repeatedly. Uh, it's setting a small leak code in the EVAP system, and we're going to change the fuel filler pipe today, or we're going to try. I don't know how difficult this is going to be. I'll show you the codes that it's setting. So we have a P0457 uh, loose fuel cap and a P0456 EVAP system small leak detected. I had smoke tested this a couple weeks ago and ordered a filler pipe because the filler pipe is really rusty. So I'm going to clear the codes out of it in preparation to do this job because I've already got the key on and the engine not running. And of course it'll take a couple of drive cycles to qualify whether the system has passed or not. Uh, we can do an EVAP test but it doesn't run the small leak test it's only for a gross leak I believe so the customer is going to have to drive it for a few, few days to see if the monitor runs and passes or if it fails again I've already warned them that there's a possibility of other things going wrong I've already changed the leak detection uh, ESIM switch uh, or ES, EISM I can't remember the acronym for it man this thing is rusty so there's the filler pipe up there. There's a joint right above this sub bracket. And a vent and a bolt here. That doesn't look like a bolt anymore. I'm gonna have to take the back tire off and the inner fender skirt out. I've already changed this uh, switch in here once. But this thing is, look at the spare tire, I'd be afraid to use the spare tire. So rotten. Well, let's get going. Here's the new part. I think it's a uh, Spectra. Well, maybe not, it's a Chinese knockoff. But I mean, it's hardly worth spending money on an OE pipe on this thing because I don't think it's much longer for the world anymore anyways. Well, let's take the wheel off and the inner fender skirt out. So there are several plastic push pins along the inside outside inner fender skirt and a couple up here, one here and one here. Remove those and then pry the plastic inner fender out this way. There it is on the floor there. So that opens it up considerably. Uh, I see this filter here is riveted on, so we'll have to replace or remove that rivet. And this vent hose, unclip that vent hose. And there's that hose clamp. That doesn't look too bad. Looks like a seven mil. So there's the Spectra part number on there. And it does come with this filter on it, so we're going to disconnect the hose at this end. I was going to drill the rivet out, but I'm not going to now. So that bolt is pretty rusty. We're going to spray it with some penetrating fluid and heat up the ear with an uh, induction heater. So I sprayed it with penetrating fluid, and I'm going to use this induction heater to heat the entire ear up. Hopefully that bolt will come out. This is much safer than an open flame, obviously. The heat will crack the rust and the penetrating fluid will hopefully work its way in there.
Let's see if we can get that off with a socket and a wrench. Ratchet, I mean. I'm using reverse spiral easy out. Maybe I'll put a socket on it. The trouble with these is they don't go backwards. I need to work that back and forth, otherwise it's gonna break off. I'm gonna put a socket on it and try and tighten it up some more. That's why they call them trouble lights. Oh, the top of the bolt is sticks through the nut like half an inch and it's all rusty. I wonder if I can get up there and cut that off. Maybe I'll chance using the impact gun on it and working it back and forth. Let's put the trouble light back up. Let's try with the impact gun. So we'll put it in first. Obviously, we're going to put a new bolt in there. Wow. I'm going to cut off that vent pipe because it's rotten anyways. I got to get the fitting out of the quick coupler. <coughs> so the pipe, I took it out in two pieces because it was so rusty. It was just easier to cut it to get the hose off the other end. Uh, slide it in above and pee on and then it goes in down through this corner here and up and it just pushes into the uh, grommet at the fender there for the filler so I have to get this piece of tubing out of this vent pipe that'll be fun but we should be good to go just reattach the hose Gonna put a new bolt and washer in there. So I took the line off at the top of the tank. There's a little release focus. If you press up on it, which you can do with a screwdriver, it comes off and the line at the top of the tank is plastic. So now I gotta work on this on the bench to get this piece of line out of here, hopefully. So there's the piece of line out. I got it out with an easy out, spinning it with a drill and uh, lots of penetrating fluid. So we're gonna put some dielectric grease on these teals and put this line back in, put the wheel back on. So there's the line or the pipe reinstalled. You can see where that fitting is on top of the tank there. You can reach up there and just, it's because it's plastic, it'll come right off. It's this one here that was at this end that was bad because it was steel into the plastic. So it was all rusty. So I'll put some silicone grease on the gas cap seal. And hopefully that's going to be the end of it. Back together. Push pins back in. Wipe some dirty fingerprints off the fender. We're good to go. Thanks for watching.